a place where white people just killed all the birds and then <laughs> and now, now they're a little country doing their own little things. Hello everyone, welcome to the Rooting Around podcast, a podcast where we take a not so deep dive into countries from around the world. I'm Kevin. I'm Tom. And I'm Ed. And this week we're going to Mauritius. But before we do, like, subscribe, comment, all that good shit. Forward. Leave five stars. Leave yeah. five stars. Or four at minimum. Yeah. Minimum no, four. five. Yeah, do five, five, maybe. Can you do a half? I don't know. So Mauritius, Ed, you've been, right? I have been. Where is it? Donde esta it's Mauritius. the Indian Ocean, isn't it? Yes. It's, um... Is that your favourite ocean? You know, I've seen three oceans. All right, all right, big, bitty big balls. Yeah. Uh, Which ones? Atlantic. Yeah. Pacific and Indian. Indian was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I'd say Indian Ocean. So that's your favourite? It's up there. What's your favourite Top ocean? three at least. Are you going to be cool? Hang on, what, what be, are the oceans? You've got Atlantic, Pacific, Indian. Arctic. Arctic. Southern. Southern Ocean. Really? Where's that? It's in the south. <laughs> is that not just the Antarctic Ocean? I think that's they've renamed it. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I've I've been to three as well. Then, uh, well, south of Australia, what's that? I think that's the Southern Ocean. Four then. Four of the five. Nice. Yeah. You've been to three as well. No. Four. Four. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> it's been to the least, and you're. I don't have a favourite. It's not, it's not the type of life I need. Uh, Pacific's my favourite. <laughs> forcing me into tr- <laughs> But yeah, it's 2,000 kilometres east of Madagascar. I always think it's further north. I always think it's near India, but it's not. No. Well, relatively speaking, it is. It's closer than America is, for example. But yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's not just like Mauritius isn't just one island, really, is it? It's, it's uh, like a, there's think, a few I think there's a couple islands, 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 but there's really just a one that is big. Yeah. Uh, and then the, there's like a French island between Madagascar and Mauritius called La Réunion. There's one called, Reunion. It's all yeah, called uh, Rodriguez. The outer islands of Cardagos, Carajos, Shoals, St. Brandon, and the Agale- Ag- Agalega Islands. So they're all part of Mauritius. Yeah, and they also, Mauritius also claims the Chagos Archipelago, which is 2,000 kilometers to the northeast. Wow. Ballsy move. Seems, like, yeah, a little bit that's, over. Yeah, that's far. Fair play. So just for, for the basic stats, it's the main island's quite small, just over 2,000 square kilometres, which is less than one Luxembourg. How much wow. less? 0.78 Luxembourg. <laughs> okay. That is less than one Luxembourg. Exactly. But I, if you take the, what is it called, the exclusive economic zone, that's 2.3 million square kilometers, oh. which is 885 square kilometers. Bullshit. Uh, it's 885 Luxembourgs, which obviously Luxembourg is landlocked. But. Do you feel Do you feel really happy when we do a country which is smaller than Luxembourg? Yes. But then I see how much like there actually is to talk about, and then I look <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Luxembourg, I'm like, I'm hey, well, maybe. they don't go to the moon. It's like who panel. knows? Who knows? They might they, they might, might have a rocket program. Point. Didn't come up, didn't come across that. No. And their population is massive as well, 1.3 million, which is two Luxembourgs, just over. It's the, 1.3 million? It's Holy the most shit. densely populated country in Africa. Is it? Yeah, that's what my fact yeah. says. And they speak Mauritian Creole. Well, there's no... But their official language is English. There's, there's no, no official. official language. Oh, really? English is the main language, um, but the French-inspired Creole dialect spoken by 85.6% of the population. Oh, sick. When I went there, I found it easy to speak French, like easier to speak French than English. Uh, also, I don't speak Creole. How similar is the Creole to French, though? There's words where you're just like, oh, I know what this is. But then the the, the rest, I'm like, oh, what? Mm. <laughs> because obviously they take... It's like there's a, a group of Luxembourg people who in the 19th century or something like that went to America. And oh, yeah. they still speak Luxembourg. Pen- the pen- the, the Pennsylvania stuff. Lux. I think it might actually be in Pennsylvania where they've got like a pocket of... <laughs> Pennsylvania Dutch? Did you get it? No. Oh, Pennsylvania Dutch is like some Germans who migrated out there. Oh. Right. Dutch. Deutsch. Oh, I see. Um, and they still speak Luxembourgish, but use like all the words of stuff that's been invented after they moved. They use in English, so like plane. Well, they, they not, don't they not the say Luxem- avion. What's, what's plane in French? Uh, fle- in French, it's avion. Yeah. In oh, no, Luxembourg, it's, it's fleisure. Oh, yeah. And 
they would then say instead of saying fleeter they would say plain in a you know Luxembourg sentence mm. which is weird so that creole feels a bit like that as well where sometimes like a modern word you'd hear it in french and then the rest of the sentence you don't understand it Fair. Uh, how long were you in mauritius for i was there for a just a week and i'd been to south africa just before that and i flew into mauritius and i only had like one night booked in an Airbnb right next to the airport, which is not in the capital. The capital is Port Louis. Yes. Um, and the airport is somewhere in the south. I think next to, I think it's called Maibourg. I can't remember now. Uh, and I just booked one, one night in an Airbnb there and didn't have any plans for the rest. I just wanted to rent a car or something and just drive around. It would take you about, what, two or three hours? You know what? It's actually, yeah, two or three hours is probably <laughs> right, but... There's so much traffic. It's so dense, like full of people. Oh, yeah. It's so yeah, yeah. hard to get like get around. You should have got a bicycle, a motorbike. I wanted to get a motorbike first, but then, I mean, I could have gotten a motorbike, but I was on my own and I was like, I've never ridden a motorbike. I don't want to do this. <laughs> so I got this really small like Suzuki. It wasn't a Suzuki Jimny. I can't remember what it was. Uh, was that a, sw- a Zwift? Yes. Suzuki Swift, classic. And I got the car and I look at the gear shift. Like, and it's automatic and I'd never driven automatic before and I was like this boggles <laughs> the mind I was stop and start <laughs> didn't, didn't have a phone but it's like you know it's D R N S e? I don't know there's another what's one. the S for I don't know there's four isn't it it's park P, so P. Yeah. okay P but I didn't I, I didn't know any of that and I was like I didn't have internet so I was like do I really have to go back to the place where I rented this car and ask the guy, how do I drive this? <laughs> I, was, I was the same when I first drove an automatic. I had no fucking clue. It's, Ter- it terrifies me. Also, two like, pedals what, what is happens really... When I take, what happens when I take my foot off the brake? Are you going to start moving? Or am I going to push the accelerator to make you move? It starts moving when you take it off the brake, isn't it? Doesn't it? Straight away. Yeah. Which is weird. So, yeah. Um, Speaking of cars... Mauritius is known for having the highest per capita rate of car ownership in Africa, with one car to almost every two people. Oh. Okay. That's not, well, that's that's not a crazy oh, okay. amount one of cars. 600,000 cars? I'm guessing so. Half the population. That's mental. Mm. On a small little island. Tad unnecessary, I think, if it's that small. Yeah. Just, just, just guys walk. and buses. Yeah, all buses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got the bus from the the airport when I landed, and I must have landed like mid afternoon. I can't remember now, but probably like four. And there's one bus that by outside the airport. It's not a big airport, obviously, it's a small island. And I just needed to get on the bus for like 15 minutes or 20 minutes max. And I waited at the bus stop for a solid two hours. And there was other people, and I would, I would just ask, like, when's the bus going? They're like, oh, you don't know. It's island times. Island time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like, okay. so, so lazy. Or laid back, Tom. Yeah. Or it was just stuck in traffic. Probably was because traffic was awful in general. But yeah. Um, The island's made up of nine districts and I only remember the name of one of them because it was Pumpelmoose. Oh. Because I love that word. Do you know what it means? Yeah. Yeah, everyone knows what Pumpelmoose means. Bonjour. There's so many good names that I I remember Flic en Flac. Flic en Flac. Yeah, which I think is really funny. Is that, just, is that a place? Yeah. <laughs> what's that? What's that mean? A, a, a J'habite a flic au flec. <laughs> is that is, isn't flic like the French slang for a policeman? It is actually, but not in that. I mean, flic au flac doesn't really mean anything. Not that I mean, maybe it does, but not that I know. So it there's it's obviously very French. You've got Dutch history. Obviously, you got African, but there's also Indian presence there. Yeah. And Arab. And Arab. They were the first ones there, apparently, and, right? And Malay. Portuguese were the first one there, and then the Arab came. Ah. But the Portuguese didn't, like, they saw the island. No one recorded it. They just walked on. Yeah, they were well, just like, boated you, on. you can't live there. So they, they left. I wonder why they thought that. It's like a tropical island. But yeah, maybe but I like, guess it depends where you land. There aren't, there aren't any dark people we can capture and sell. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, it, depending on where you land, like, the, I remember there's a part in the south where it's just, like, rocks like you're not rocks and cliffs and cliffs yeah, yeah you're not really going to do anything but then if you go to the north it's the nicest beaches so yeah i guess it depends where you land and then yeah the, the arabs are the same they left dutch came and i think they stayed. were the first recorded yeah on the island yeah french came took it over the brits came took it over 
I only got independence from the UK in 1968. Fucking hell. We're so bad. 1968? Yeah, kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't realise that. I know, you'd have thought that I'd worked out a bus turntable by now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's... that's um, yeah, we're so fucking bad. Yeah, well, well, yeah. I would say we're the worst, but I'm not entirely sure that's true. We were the worst. One of the worst. Yeah, I think on balance we're probably the worst. Yeah. Individually, Belgium was pretty terrible, but... If you look at the amount of land, maybe... I mean, the trustees, four, maybe four not. or five absolute ball bags of history. We're British. No, no, there's just like key ball bags of history. Like who, who, are you, who, are you, who are your key ball bags? The Dutch. Oh, I thought you were talking about like, individuals like Boris Johnson. Uh, oh, no, uh, I mean, Boris Johnson's bad, but he's by no means the top five ball bags of history. Who are your ball bags then? Of history? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How far back? Because I'm sure some Romans would have something to say well, about like put, you murdering put, you people. You could put Nero in if you wanted to, if you want to go that far back. My first ball bag yeah. is... Maybe there should be an award we give out uh, every episode. <laughs> ball bag awards. Oh, uh, yeah, the biggest ball bag from the country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, biggest ball bags in history. Well, I think Genghis Khan was a bit of a ball bag. Yeah, 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 he was. Oh, it was not my first thought. No, no. I mean, Mussolini is a pretty big ball bag. All right, halfway there. The man with one ball was a ball bag. Yeah, that's um, fair. I mean, Savile. Got... Yeah, he was a ball bag as well. I don't know why I'm going into politics more. I just, there's people that I don't like. <laughs> I I think like Pol Pot. Pol Pot, proper ball massive, bag. massive ball bag. Uh, Pinochet from yeah, Chile. Pinochet yeah, was he was a bit well. of a ball bag. Yeah. And um, the Belgian king from back. Oh, then. Leopold the second. Yeah, yeah, he was guy. a bit of a ball bag. Ed, ball bags. Yeah, I would have said Pinochet and like the Belgian king Leopold. Mel Gibson. <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, yes. Some pretty bad things about the Jews, isn't he? He did. Yeah, he's not very nice. Have you seen that video? <laughs> so, <laughs> have you seen that video for me? A cheeseburger. Is it him? No, no, that's uh, Hasselhoff. It is Hasselhoff. Where he's steaming, oh, eating a cheeseburger so on the floor, funny. yeah. Uh, rest in peace, David. He's still with us. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> speaking of Speaking death. of uh, long extinct things. Oh, yes. From Mauritius. Oh, oh yes. yes. I'm sure you've got an animal you'd like to talk about. I have plenty to talk about. He's basically, well, he, they, uh, basically the... Uh, oh, dodo them. <laughs> the dodo. A dodo them. They are... The symbol of extinction. It's, you know, obviously what everyone says dinosaurs, but they are used as like an emblem of what shit humans can do. So they're a bit misunderstood as well. Everyone thinks they're slow, dumb birds. But uh, so they were a flightless bird that lived, lived there. It was... So they're about three and a half foot tall and weigh about 50 pounds. So it's what, 25 kilos-ish? Yeah, that's yeah. big. It's a big old bird. Uh, it had a hook beak that it used to crack open fruits and hard shells. Um, Would it have eaten coconuts? Or was that a bit too much? that size, maybe. Because it's going to be... You need some strength, though, to open a coconut. <clears throat> it's not it. It's smashing. <laughs> You've seen pictures of them, right? Yeah. I've yeah. seen the stuffed one. Oh, yeah, they've got their yeah, natural, natural history natural museum. Natural, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but they're not real feathers. It's taxidermy, right? isn't it? It's a taxidermy one. I think so. Yeah, I think it's a real one. Real feathers and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I would hope so. When was it? When did it go extinct? So God, they went uh, extinct in the late 17th century. Um, oh, that old? I yeah. thought it was like the 1800s. No, no. That, that's why I'm surprised they've got feathers still of that. We'll have to. Well, it's like that it's like that, it's like that Greek philosophical question, isn't it? You know, if you you know, it's the whole thing about what is feathers. <laughs> why is that? No, if you you get a boat, and over every, every time that a plank snaps or rots, you replace it. And once you've replaced every single plank in that boat, is it still the same boat? So it's like if with a taxidermy bird, you replace feathers every now and again. At what point is it no longer that taxidermy bird? Hmm. Feel free to comment below. <laughs> yeah, tell us in the comments what you think What's about your favorite the <laughs> philosophical paradox. <laughs> so, yeah, for those that haven't seen them, the plump body, small wings, and a tuft of curly feathers on its tail. The word dodo comes from the Portuguese word dudo, which means fool or simpleton. 
Uh, and the bird was given this name because of its friendly and trusting nature, which made it a very easy target for hunters. Prude. I guess there's a difference between hunting for sport and hunting for food. Yeah. I have never hunted. I never hope to. Um, have you ever fished? No, never would. Okay. No. Only I'd only use those fishing ones where you, they, they can feed. Have you seen those? It's like, instead of a bait, it's just full of fish food. So they just, they just like latch onto it and eat the food. And you can enjoy them being on the rod. <laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't... I wouldn't. You just play a tug of war with a fish. <laughs> yeah, and, and the fish down with some lunch. So yeah. it's, like, it's nice, but no, I've never done fishing. Fair. I never would. But yeah, my point was, I always equate hunting now with hunting for, hunting for sport. Yeah. And that would have been you turn it, up on a, a desert island. Like there's no, there's no enjoyment there yeah. for me. I can't see it. But I guess if you're, if you're hungry for a little tasty bird snack, then... I mean, it's three and a half feet tall, so it's gonna it's gonna do some good food. I got some interesting food things with uh, with another species there. So yeah, they were. Everyone says they're kind of uh, slow and a bit stupid, thanks to the Portuguese. But they're actually they were actually really intelligent and adaptable, um, and it used to run very quickly for its uh, for its size and weight. And the dodo was first discovered by the European sailors in the late sixteenth century and became a symbol of exotic and mysterious words world of the tropics so yeah it was very nimble on its feet and it had uh was able to run at high speeds and could jump over three feet today the dodo what? is remembered it could jump over three feet yeah that's three, like what's three, its height you said three and a half feet so it, could, it can jump its height basically yeah yeah imagine it's if you could that. do that yeah some people can like box jump pretty high yeah but i suppose this guy's not like an athlete yeah know? it's just not a regular just a fat bird <laughs> just a regular <laughs> dodo if the regular human could just like you know what if it can only jump three feet long? That's still that's still all right. It's a meter. Yeah, but he is also a meter. Well, I guess. I'm yeah, sure no, if you were running and you took a big jump, you could. Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure guessing it's three feet vertical. I but shouldn't. I don't even know how they could. I mean, scientists wrote stuff down then, so I guess. <laughs> um, um, must have jumped over jump. a low wall, and they were like, "They just knew exactly." <laughs> Uh, so yeah, today the dodo is a bit of a tragic symbol because of human-caused extinction. Um, and it's just quite charismatic. I think it's quite yeah. a cool, cool bird. But it's only found on that island, which is weird. No, yeah, because it's a small island. Like. Yeah. But one thing I thought was, was quite cool is um, they used to have a species of giant tortoise on the island. And oh, no, they ate that as well. They ate that as well. Oh, God. Um, what the dodo did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, where is Cracked it? Cracked the shell, like, oof. Yeah, the head butted it and just sucked it all out. Yeah, so it, it was like, <laughs> it could feed one person for like up to three weeks, like each tortoise. How apparently. big was the tortoise? A giant, how have good you seen? were their fridges? Probably well, quite are, bad. <laughs> just turn, and giant well, tortoises just turn are massive. Up, They're like... You just turn it upside down and use the shell as the cooking vessel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I really loved was that, so... They were going to reintroduce the species onto the island. What Galapagos <laughs> ones? No, like because on on small islands you quite often get gigantism in uh, tortoises, in not just tortoises but in other other animals as well, like Komodo dragons. How come? Uh, I don't really know. It's ironic, isn't it? I guess because they dominate the one habitat and are so specialised in one certain thing. They just get bigger and bigger. Get bigger and bigger. Yeah, I don't know. But like in the Galapagos, for example, like one of the, uh, the I'm just oh, I'm going to outline the tortoise in the mind's eye. Uh, no, the top of like on one island, the top of its shell curves up like a saddle because that specific species has got to eat food that's higher up on branches. Oh, so it needs, it's like a giraffe. So it needs, it's extended. Yeah, it needs to extend the shell basically so it can go up. But they basically missed when they were trying to reintroduce them into uh, Mauritius, they missed it and then dropped them off on Seychelles. How can you make that mistake? I have no idea. But well, when was it? When did they try and introduce it? A few hundred years ago? I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't like... So yeah, and, and, and now the giant tortoises <laughs> from it, Seychelles okay. are like pretty well well established. And then why can't you just it. take a few of the ones from the Seychelles to Mauritius? I think they probably have, to be entirely honest. But they got really cool, like, uh, well, there's a lot of endangered species there, but they've got, like, the Mauritius flying fox, which is massive. Flying um, fox? Just yeah. Just because it jumps high? No, it's a giant bat. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's what they're called. They're called flying foxes. And they've got the pink pigeon, which is only found on Mauritius. Is it really is it really pink? Yeah. yeah like like pastel pink. It's really pretty. Oh nice. Yeah, so it's a biodes- biodiversity hotspot with a high level of endemism, which they're unique to the island. Uh the pink pigeon, the Mauritius kestrel, and the Mauritius fruit bat are all popular endemic animals there. They had ebony forests of Mauritius, so some of the most threatened habitats in the world. Uh, with only a small percentage of the original forest remaining. Because so, ebony is a type of wood, isn't it? Yeah. Really dark wood. Yeah. It, it used to be lush and filled with ebony hardwood. But now... It's not so lush. Back all, yeah. But it just looks and sounds incredible. And the coast, I mean, the, the sea life around that, I'm not sure if you yeah, got went snorkeling the, or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I did go snorkeling. And there's, I think, like, during COVID, so 2020, there was a huge uh, boat accident um well in mauritius yeah with well, a lot of oil got spilled oh fuck it did yeah um so that really damaged the pretty amazing ecosystem they've got a lot of um corals and stuff like that beautiful colors mm. yeah i when i went to that airbnb like, i was pretty lucky to just find that they were not locals because <laughs> there, was, there was one spanish guy and one french guy but they had been there for like, a few years i think and they were just working there and they're not like those typical ex- expats that just stay with like their groups like they're really trying to join like local mingle get yeah, part mingle, of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah and this one evening they took me to a i don't know what it was like a, a social club basically and it was like food for everyone and just a bunch of locals basically. i had a great night the next day they took me snorkeling to a place that is not really famous because it's touristy it's like a very touristy island like in the north like you've got a lot of resorts and stuff and i was in the south and they took me like um snorkeling in these beautiful beaches but where like there was no one mm. and we just went snorkeling saw the most beautiful stuff and i was like oh, nice that's the dream man i don't really know anything about fish as mm. you know they've got like, they've got wow. amazing <laughs> sharks around there like not massively dangerous but just yeah, some of the species are incredible in the Indian Ocean. But I'm guessing being so, being an island, lots of fish-like creatures, they must have very interesting food, Ed. Surprisingly, they don't eat that much. Like, they eat quite a lot of meat. And from my experience, it's delicious food. Very inspired from, like, China and India. So yeah, they, they like loads of curries. I think they like curries. Like loads, of seven. In, loads of Indians were bought there as indentured. Yeah workers yeah basically when they got rid of slaves they brought in other slaves. Brought indians to work for slightly more money than slaves so yeah so there's a huge like curries and stuff they've got i think they call them farathas but they're basically parathas mm. nice uh and you get them in markets and i had some as well like that you literally just walk around markets and just have it as like a to-go snack and it's oh my god it's delicious just like uh almost like a pancake filled with lentils i think mm. oh, that sounds so and good so good uh they've also got something called bol renversé which means in french like an upside down bowl and when they bring it it's literally just like a mountain of rice in in a stir fry on top of that and an egg so it's like a bowl of rice stir fry on top of that was usually quite like a, a thick sauce uh, like fish sauce, so stuff like that usually. And then either veg- uh, vegetables, chicken or, or like prawns or something. And then an egg on top of that. Oh, so good. Also nice. got like noodles and fried noodles. So they tick uh, every box really. Yeah. And imagine the seafood over there is just... I can't remember charts. eating seafood to be honest, but it must like... Mm. Depends how they they fish really i can't i can't remember but like much about seafood i just remember eating a lot of like parathas and stuff like that yeah. constantly you just stop on the side of the road have one of them in general really if you good. saw um, uh, it would be mauritian right is that how you say mauritian yeah, I think yeah, so. I'd say so. they in general would you say they look indian it's a mix like you can have it's like, a real mix of just yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay fair. i'd say i mean this is just from my experience the majority would probably look more indian mm. but there's also a lot of like east asian people and quite a lot of white people as mm. well a lot of black people as well i mean it's quite, yeah. it's quite a big mix there's a lot of temples that's one thing i didn't actually visit which i regret it's like 
you, you drive around there's a lot of temples like really colorful temples hindu but, temples right yeah hindu yeah. temples so like there's a huge indian influence but they're all like fence stuff so i never really oh, went yeah, I've got so, a, just while you're while we're on the indians very quickly there's a language over there called bojpuri which is quite commonly spoken over there which is a variant of the bojpuri language spoken in northern india and nepal Ah, oh. so they've they've held on to that as it, well. There's definitely times where you like when you see those temples, for example, when you drive around, you're like, huh, I, I thought I was in <laughs> uh, on an island that, like close to Africa, but it doesn't look like it at all. Yeah, it looks so nice. Would you go back? Oh yeah, it was yeah yeah definitely. It's actually surprisingly easy and cheap to go. Mm. Uh, I remember actually like flying there. I, flew, I, I might have said this on the podcast actually, but I flew. I went to South Africa for a bit, but. Uh, I flew flew from Luxembourg to Munich to then fly to South Africa, uh, and on the flight to Luxembourg, I saw a girl I went to school with. I didn't know really well, but I just you know said hi, uh, and then went to South Africa, went to Mauritius, saw everything in Mauritius, flew back, and on the plane from Mauritius to Munich, the same girl was on the plane. And I was like, oh, so she must have gone to Mauritius all like the two three weeks i was i was there uh and then when i got home just out of interest i just went on instagram just to see what she'd seen because i just had this really good experience first soil traveling I fucking hope you're in the background of one of her pictures uh, i wish that'd be great that'd be so so weird but no like, I, I had this like great trip like it was my first solo trip really wanted to see everything met a lot of people and really had a great experience. And then I saw her Instagram, it was just the same beach for like three weeks because she was in a resort. And oh, I was shit. like, imagine flying to the other side of the world. To go, I mean, they did, I understand why you'd go to a resort, but do you have to go to Mauritius to go to like? It's weird. I think it's going to bring two complete opposite end of the spectrum type tourists. It's going to be like, the ultra high end luxury Instagram, hundred yeah, percent. There's a lot of that slash honeymooners. Then mm. you're gonna have the animal nerds, the hikers, and things like and that. And just in general nature, because there's so much. They've got this area where uh, it's like a. Li- <laughs> it's not that impressive when you get there because it's not that big. But it's like in Peru, you know, where you've got the sand that has different colors. Yeah, mm. yeah. So they've uh, got that as well. It's called the uh, chamorral colored earth. Yeah, and it's it's nuts it's pretty cool like, I, I went there but i don't think i was there at the right time of year because it's the time of year where it's like stronger the contrast yeah i think i was there when it's slightly uh less strong but i think it's after heavy rain uh maybe because yeah, like some of the colors are from like a rust in the uh, ground yeah it's it's beautiful mm. <laughs> i got there after like 10 people told me oh you really have to go see that and i was happy to see it but i also thought this is basically one mountain of sand Nice sand, but it's not massive because I, obviously I saw like Peru small, and stuff like that. Colorful yeah. sand, dune. yeah. But yeah. sort of like you know, jungle type forest in the background is pretty cool. Yeah, I got a list of some nice sites there. Um, there's that, yeah, the Chamorral Seven Colored Earth, which is like on every postcard, I think, basically. Yeah, but just the right angle. <laughs> yeah. Then there's that. Um, there's that drone photo I always see where it's like the underwater waterfall. Yeah. Which mm, yeah, is just I've sand falling off the edge of... But it's not an underwater waterfall. It's sand. Still looks good though. Still looks fun. Looks great, yeah. There is the Le Monde Brabant, which That's is world... That's right next to the... the like, what, what's on that, that place? On, on that picture where you see the sand, like the uh, underwater waterfall, you'd see the Mon as well, which is that mountain right next to it. Oh, Sick. Yeah. So, so are place. they all? All the tourist sites are just like no, you just turn no, around and take a they're, picture. They're all over, but those two things, like you, you kind of like they're almost the same thing. Like if you mm. look at that picture, both sites are impressive because that mountain is is like a it's a peninsula, and it's just a mountain. It's weird. It's like is that La Mont Brabant. Yeah, I've got a little fact about that. Oh, oh. in the 18th and 19th century, the mountain was used as a refuge for escaped slaves. Mm. We used to live in the caves around there. And then they lived there for a few years and then some soldiers arrived who were actually going to tell them that slavery had been abolished. They thought they were going to be recaptured, so they jumped off the mountain to their death. Oh, that's yeah. tragic. It's a bit of, a shit, a bit of an unhappy story. Yeah. I thought I'd just interject there. A bit sad. <laughs> just like, 
push a bit of sand since the episode. Yeah, yeah. Gotta love it. Mm. It's a crazy fall if you fall from that mountain. I'm pretty sure I told that story. That's when I climbed a mountain when it was raining. Oh, I think you yeah. had some pictures. I'd, Can you show us pictures? I think maybe. So. so that mountain is like one of the most touristy parts like usually you can climb up it it's like imagine if penny van but comp like you know how you've oh, got the up, easy route up, to complicate that route van a couple of weeks ago how was it i was busy busy uh, as I'm fuck how was it like easter i was there 8 30 on easter saturday uh, oh dude that's, that's literally the such worst. a bad idea it wasn't <laughs> as busy as it could have been but it was, it was pretty busy yeah well that, there's like a, a an easy route and a slightly harder route well that one has only a hard route and it's like at times it's like anyone can do it but at times it's, you actually have to do a bit of like climbing and lifting yourself up and it's usually very busy and i get there on the last day and i really wanted to do it because i can't miss that one like famous postcard spot and the moment i park up it starts raining and literally everyone leaves and there's <laughs> no one there really so i start climbing up thinking ah oh, you know this weather won't be bad too long and also it's so touristy so like famous surely it's like a normal path like it's, mm. it's not gonna be that hard and it was pissing it down so much wind and so slippery <laughs> i was so scared but i saw like a guy climbing up and he was wearing a yellow jacket or something so i was like okay i'm not the only one here but it was just the two of us basically mm. oh was he a ghost <laughs> no but you can do your segue after this. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> uh, and I got to the top. Honestly, I, I, at times I was like, fuck me, this is a bad idea. But also if I'm going back down, it's, the danger is the same. So I might as well go up. Yeah. Uh, and for a penny. I got to the top and this guy was there. Start talking to him. He's from Hungary and works in Luxembourg. Well, oh, I think I have heard you tell the story. Yeah. yeah what are the chances? Yeah. And then, yeah, we got back down. Tells you about the Luxembourgish mindset. Yeah. Pushing through. Yeah. Get to the top of that mine. That's the closest <laughs> we're going to get to the moon. So, yeah. <laughs> Guess the And the weather got like a lot better the moment we got up there as well. Do you remember, yeah. his, do you remember his name? No. Oh, that's a shame. Let's make up a hut. What's the Hungarian name? Attila. Attila. <laughs> I know some Hungarians called Attila. Uh, did you say plural? <laughs> Hungarians. Yeah, I know. I've met two Hungarians called Attila. Is that all the Hungarians you've met? I've met several Hungarians. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll circle back to my ghost comment because I'm going to do the mythical creature. I'll be honest, right? You sounded so Welsh there. I struggled a little bit. And this one is more of like a French one. But I did take this from the Facebook group of the Mauritius Paranormal Investigators Research Society. <sighs> okay. I always love when like groups like that have a super long name. So it's so it's, so it's officious, you know. Um, this is apparently this is widely believed in to exist in um, in Mauritius. This is and I, you have to correct my pronunciation, Ed. The Lou Garou, Lou Garou, which no is way. werewolf. Yeah. Whoa. Um So it's a French legend of a man who will change into a wolf at his slash her own will. Um, legend says that when a person comes into contact with the loup garou uh, and sheds the blood of the beast, uh, it will change into its human form and reveal their secret. The victim then becomes a loup garou for 101 days. Uh, if the victims speak of the account to anyone, they will become that themselves. Uh, and if they remain quiet about it, they will return to their human forms, continue on with their lives. It's just a werewolf. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a fan of that one. Yeah. I think werewolves Just are scary will. if there are like actual wolves in the area. Like it could be a wolf or it could be a man wolf. But well, there's no wolves on my I guess it's scarier in some ways because French colonizers, they bought one with them. Oh. Yes, yeah, so it's like a, it's been bought into, uh, it's going to eat munch on all of the locals. But surely, but being so small and so dense, there would by now be so many werewolves. Maybe they are. Maybe they are. That's maybe, maybe what's being quiet. This is why the Paranormal Investigators Research Society is so busy. Ah, uh, right. On their, they're, face, they're, they're on their Facebook post from 2013. <laughs> <laughs> is there a picture of that as well? Uh, Was I, it yeah, with the person who liked it? Did they just have like a Viva Vendetta picture on their Facebook? <laughs> oh, probably. Or like, a, like an <laughs> Occupy Wall Street one or something. Yeah. So yeah, it wasn't a great one, this one. I think there were some interesting ones, but they tend to be shared a lot of, with a lot of like, 
pan, not like Caribbean-y ones as well. I think it's because there's so much. Mm. A lot of the French cryptids got bought And also there's colonization. a huge population of, well, there was a huge population of slaves that were taken from Africa. So they would have taken something. Then a lot of Indians coming over. Yeah, it's going to be a real, real melting pot. Oh, one thing I, f- I forgot about the food. I guess it's food. They're, they they love rum, white rum specifically. Oh, yeah. They got make a lot, lot of, of sugar cane over yeah. there, right? That's I the hate, worst of the rums, though. Yeah, I hate it. It was horrible. And <laughs> one night I, I went, just met these people and uh, went back to their house and all they had was white rum. And <laughs> it's not, doesn't sound too bad. I didn't like it. I had a, it's yeah. called the Green Island Rum, isn't it? That's like that's their, a brand, isn't it? That's their mm. their one. Uh, apparently, won several international awards. Yeah, Fascinating. I feel like a lot of those awards are like bullshit. Like, hey, <laughs> why don't we give them the greatest ball bag rum makers? Oh yeah, give them an international award. Okay, I like yeah. this. Yeah, just, <laughs> just for saying you're international, you're a ball bag. <laughs> uh, I got some national symbols for you. The coat of arms. Uh, the coat of arms features a dodo, a key, a green sugar cane, and the country's motto in Latin, Stella Clavisque Maris Indici, which means star and key of the Indian Ocean. Oh, oh that's nice. nice. Their flag's great as well. That's one of the only flags with four lines. Yeah. The national flag of Mauritius has four horizontal uh, stripes of red, blue, yellow, and green, with the country's coat of arms in the center. So their flag has a dodo on it. That's oh, I didn't know the, the, coat of, the coat of arms no, was on there. Die. The national flower of Mauritius is Trochetia boutoninia, a type of hibiscus that is only found on that island. The national bird is the pink pigeon, critically endangered, but uh, yeah, conservation efforts going, going hard. National tree is the bois dentel, also known as the lacewood. Does that check out? Yeah, dentel is like the... I suppose that's hope late as well. For its like, delicate and intricate grain yeah. patterns. The national fish is a vacoa marlin, which is a big fish with a pointy face. <laughs> um, the national fruit is a trochetia boutoniana, which is the same flower as the national... The same flower that is the national flower of the country. Makes the fruit. Makes the fruit. Huh. And okay. then the national animal is the dodo. Aww, oh, really? That's not fair. You could have a we could have a current one at least. So didn't well, you say the national Scotland. animal is a pigeon? No, that's the national bird. But how come the dodo's not the national bird? Because <laughs> it takes priority. <laughs> but isn't it a unicorn the national animal of Scotland? I yeah. thought it was Loch Ness monster. Oh. <laughs> how can you have? How can you national bird? How can a bird be your national animal but not your national bird? How is that possible? Because it's a ground dwelling bird so it makes Still it more a realistic i don't know that's, an interesting, that's an interesting point actually but where's the line well, where's the line marish apparently it's once you generate enough lift to take off <laughs> <laughs> speaking yeah. of things that might want you might want to make you take off can i, can I just before we do please do i right. want to talk about how do you feel we may have already spoken about this how do you feel about scientists trying to bring animals back from from the dead are you spoke about that with um with, with jack. jack jack with yeah. the dodo um yeah i love, yeah. It. love, love it. it love it did you hear they made a mammoth meatball what i didn't know they recently. made a meatball out of it they, they got some tissue and then grew the tissue and dna into a, some meat and then turned it into a meatball where was and this ate it. russia <laughs> probably <laughs> they, they ate that as well i think so yeah they a bit of bolognese and oh imagine mammoth i would <laughs> oh, just stick some um Stick some barbecue sauce on it and glaze it. I know, I know you're not for hunting, but if they did like, you know, Dodo Disney edition where you could go around, I mean, you don't hunt at Disneyland, but just <laughs> like a, a hunting theme park where you could just kill and eat loads of Dodos. No. And they were just they, churning them out. Because they do it, they do it in South Africa, don't they? With like hunting lodges. And hunting, yeah, I suppose so. Um, I know, I'm against well, it. Can you explain what that is? What? What do you mean they just churn them out? And dodo, obviously dodos don't exist. What, you, know, what do control, you just control C, control V, and you get loads of dodos. Yeah, copy and paste, and you just Have keep a, printing more. I'm so yeah, like, like, why are you like talking about money. Yeah, like a 3D printer. <laughs> why are you talking about <laughs> No, if we, if we were talking about reintroducing, then I was like, I proposed to Tom, would he kill and eat a dodo if I, it was... I guess I guess if 
Or if, if we could play God and just like, and like like trees, we cut a tree down, we plant a new one. You're talking about that, like. Well, yeah, people in, are like trying state. to bring the mammoth and the dodo back from extinction. Right. So the first dodo is back. You kill no, it no. Together. Wait until there's enough, and then you turn it into. And then you, a I dodo imagine, factory. That's the whole thing about you used to <laughs> use the proceeds from the hunting to, to copy and paste more yeah. dodos. <laughs> but but you can do, you can do that for other animals. Like we, no, I know, yeah, but, but they're more, dodos, what, but they're more just, exciting, aren't they? It's no because one, they were extinct, and there's there's a chance that you're making it extinct as well. No one wants to bring back a really boring animal. Like, like let's say the purple pigeon went extinct. I know it's really cool. It's pink. And yeah, but it's not a dodo, is it? Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure there's some really, really. Yeah, there's not many birds that I can think that look like pelicans. Yeah, are pretty cool. Like, Penguins. If you had the, cho- if you had the choice to bring back a shrew or a mammoth, you're going to choose a mammoth. Yeah. Yeah. Charisma. It's because we see it in cartoons. Yeah, it's just because of Ice Age. Yeah. Oh, I do like that film. I've seen it for ages. It's crazy. Uh, what was the segue that I interrupted you with? Oh, oh, it was sorry. rubbish. No, I need, to, I need to have come in for another another run. So we have to keep talking well, about let, something. Let okay. Uh, I've got some funny history moments. There was um, the Battle of Vieux Grand Port. During this battle between the British and French uh, navies in 1810, the British ship, British ship mistakenly fired on another British ship in the dark, causing confusion and chaos among their own fleet. Nice. Sounds like yeah. the... Um, is it the Romain, or Hungarian army uh, that lost the yeah. war against itself? Is the, uh, yeah, I think it was Hungarian. Yeah, it was, yeah they're fighting in Romania. Yeah. Um, oh, it happened friendly fire. That's, what are you do? I thought it was Austria. Maybe it was Austria. Yeah. Oh, my God. No. Same, same. <laughs> Austria Hungary, whatever. There you go. There's a legend um, about the tooth of St. Louis. When King Louis the Ninth of France visited Mauritius in the 13th century during the Crusades, he lost a tooth while eating local fruit, and the tooth was kept as a relic and was passed down through generations, eventually finding its way to a museum in France. However, it was later discovered that the tooth was not actually from St. Louis but rather from a hippopotamus. <laughs> it's close <What>? enough. <laughs> was he known for having a really big tooth? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's the the fucking mm-hmm. Louis Bucktooth. <laughs> and then, yeah, are one there of the other... Are in, in Mauritius? Are they what? Hippos in Mauritius? No. Where the fuck did they get that tooth from? <sighs> Doesn't matter, does it? No. It just turned up. Maybe it washed up one day. Yeah, it could have been. Could have been? Could have been. Does hippo's teeth lead smoothly into anything well it certainly leaves a bad taste in my mouth Excellent. and nothing can leave a bad taste in your mouth quite like an, an unpleasant hotel or guest house experience <laughs> which leads me really quite beautifully onto uh my favorite segment of the week the alpha guest house edition international brought to you as always in association with the alpha guest house bristol's premium guest house accommodation um they brought the dodo back they haven't brought dodo back (laughs) they but they (laughs) put mammoth on the breakfast menu they've no they (laughs) they decided to start using single-use plastics again oh brilliant yeah yeah. (laughs) get rid of those paper straws yeah waste um so and i'll be honest mauritius is Famed for its luxury high-end resorts. Yeah, that's what I was <laughs> going to say. It's going to be a tough one. To the point at which I really struggle to find ones with bad reviews. Mm. But then I was... But there's so much potential for bad reviews, though. Because a lot of Karens go there. Yeah! So I've only got one. I've only got one review from this hotel. And thankfully, it's a bit of a Karen, and there's a response. Oh, this is my favorite. So, this is my absolute favorite. This is from the Cocotier Hotel in Mauritius. It is cheap for a reason. Absolutely horrible. Please don't stay there. This was a horrible experience. It is the cheapest hotel for a reason. The beach is fake and you can't even get in the water. Food is stale (laughs) and horrible. You have to spit it out. It's not even edible. Wait, do you have to spit it out? You can't just take it out with your (laughs) hand. You're compelled to spit it out. Um, Stray dogs everywhere on the beach. They bark all night. There is a beach. Yeah, you're not allowed to go there though. It's fake. It's full of dogs. So um, real dogs on fake beaches. Rooms are filthy, small, and have no windows or view. Staff are unfriendly and cold. This is not a hotel, but a cheap motel by a mediocre beach, which apparently is not is fake. A mediocre fake beach. 
Dear John. Thank you. That was John. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. I so it's, a, it's a, a Ken or a Karen. What are they called? Um, Keith. Kevin's. Keith. <laughs> they are quite often called Kevins, unfortunately. Dear John. Mauritius. Thank you for taking the time to review our hotel. We are sadly concerned to note that your experience was so negative from start to end, but it would it would be wise to provide more details about all what you said. I would just like to start by pointing out the following. The beach along the coast of Bay de Tombeau is not as sandy as other beaches around the island, yet in front of our hotels we have add sand twice a year to ensure that our guests can at least enjoy the beach. Regarding getting into the water... I believe it was your choice not to get in. We are located on the beach and we even have a boathouse with free water activities. We also provide beach equipment for snork swimming and snorkeling. Um, regarding the food, I again believe we might be just that you found the food bad. We are having over 85% occupancy for the last few weeks. Uh, have no such feedbacks from our other guests. I wonder how other guests are enjoying our food, but not you. Stray dogs are found on all beaches and even cities in Mauritius. I believe you are a, Ma a Mauritian and you must know better than me about all of this. It's impossible for us to prevent dogs from barking. Oh, oh. yes. Regarding our rooms, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's really happy. Got a terrace. I has, um, every room has a terrace and a balcony. I find it hard to believe there are no windows or views. Um, and yeah, it goes on. Thank, we still thank you for taking the time to write your comment and give us an opportunity to show our guests that we are only a two-star hotel located on the beach and not a cheap motel by a mediocre beach. Best regards, the management. Oh, yeah, he, that was a nice. solid burn. I really one. want to understand what, what he meant by fake beach, just because they add sand. I think it's a bit pebbly and shitty compared to like the pristine, you know, amazing beaches. But there's quite a I quite often prefer pebble beaches. Oh, I hate them. It's, the water is so much yeah, clearer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is benefits, but also it's really uncomfortable to sit on. Just bring a pillow. That's a good point. And wear some wear some jandals. Yeah, That's it for me. I'm all malicious out. I I would love to you see any, the. Can, you got any famous people? Oh uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, inventions. I've got some inventions. Where are we? Sege music. Oh, is yes. it like reggae? Which originated in Mauritius, 1980s, is a fusion of Sega music, which is traditional uh, Mauritian music, and reggae. Oh, sounds good. So they've smushed together. Obviously, the Green Island Rum and the Mauritius Commercial Bank was the first bank in the world to introduce the ATM. They didn't invent it, but they were the first bank to have it. Interesting. That's a weird flex, but I'm, I've got time for it. Uh, and it was in 1987. 1987? Yeah. What, 87? Yeah. That's... So ATMs have only been around for 35 years. Right. Quick math. I find that hard to believe. I think they were, I thought they were as old as time. No, you know, like, not as old as time, <laughs> but like, I just assume they've been around since like the 50s. But you need a computer in there. Oh, yeah, I guess in height now I'm thinking about it, yeah. Open your fucking eyes, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> um... I got some tourism stuff. Yeah. According to the Mauritius uh, Tourism Promotion Authority, the island received 1.3 million tourists in 2019. That's the same as the population. Yeah. France, Reunion Island, and the UK being the top three source markets. The tourism industry is a major contributor in the GDP, which is 8%, and it creates over 100,000 jobs. So what's that? Just under 10% of the population work in tourism. Yeah. Yeah. But 8% nice. of the GDP is a lot, but not that much. I thought it'd be more. Yeah, me too. What's the rest of their GDP? R rum. Rum. Sugar. Dining out on Dodo stories. <laughs> uh, the island is known for its beautiful beaches, um, and it's been named the world's leading island destination by the World Travel Awards uh, multiple times. The island is also a popular destination for honeymooners, full of romantic resorts. That's why Ed went on his own. Uh, <laughs> in 2021 I, I gotta make was, the most of the marriages that don't work oh yeah like a vulture <laughs> yeah. like a little desperate, oh, desperate vulture desperate I love people. that how old were you when you went to Mauritius since 2018 so like 21 swooping in on on just after the, after a couple of new words have had an argument and you're there At can the I bar. buy you a rum <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you want to come back to my Airbnb with a Spanish bloke? <laughs> Do you want to hear my story about me climbing a mountain? Did it work? Not Did you break up married, your marriages? Married women, no. <laughs> I didn't destroy marriages. While well, I... no, the marriage was on the rocks anyway. You just pushed it over the edge, mate. Yeah. Yeah. So, don't worry so I didn't that. destroy them, don't worry. They were, yeah, they were on the way out. So you're not to blame. As long as you're involved, it's fine. Um, it's ranked the third safest uh, country in Africa by the Global Peace Index as well. Okay. I mean, I know, obviously, it is it is part of Africa because of geographical reasons, but you never really think of it as Africa. Like it's No, that's true. They've, a very different country to all the other African countries, even very different to Madagascar. Just because there's... How far away is it from Madagascar? Did like 2,000 kilometers. kilometers. That's like most of Europe. Yeah. Uh, and it also takes. like, because no one lived there before, well, apparently no one lived there before uh, the Dutch came, there's no technically African population that was there before, mm. like, so yeah, they're all like, imported, sadly. Like, like I guess but, even in Madagascar, there was like Bantu migration, yeah. and then there was like Malagai and Malagasy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. I, I, I don't. Well, I wouldn't think of Mauritius as an African yeah. country, and that's not like to say anything bad. No, about no. I mean Mauritius it is, but African it doesn't country. feel as African. It's it's like a weird little product of colonialism. Yeah, it is just this weird, well, melting pot of just like a. A place where white people just dumped a load of other non-white people, and, that, and, and then that, just took some some of the nice stuff, and and yeah, and killed all the birds, and then <laughs> and now now they're a little country doing their own little things. England, I think the French were the worst in Mauritius. To be fair, yeah, we were the ones who had it last though, so we win. Oh. <laughs> Pretty sure the British are the ones who abolished slavery there, because the French were Probs, yeah. are, so the French abolished slavery in France. Uh, but the local government, a governor was like, we're not doing that here. So they didn't abolish it at the same time. Treat people. No, they treat people. Yeah, yeah, it was the British that abolished it. So slightly better. And that was wow. in 1835. Eight. Wow. Painfully, not that long ago. Yeah. It's almost as old as ATMs. Almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> yes. Uh, I got one more cool fact that I thought was... Uh, Quite nice and light-hearted. You know, I said it was the star in the key of the Indian Ocean. Some people now call it the postage stamp of the world, as Mauritius has issued more postage stamps per capita than any other country. All those postcards. Per capita. Per capita. Right, okay. But bear in mind the population is reasonable. Do people still send postcards? I do. When was the last time you sent a postcard? Like last year. be a good move to send I postcards. I love sending postcards. Yeah, need to start I should send it. more postcards. When I, was, when I was living in St. Petersburg the first time, <laughs> I, um, I sent my mum a postcard. <laughs> I, bought, um, I bought a Sharpie and I like deliberately censored certain words. <laughs> <to see that>. <laughs> <laughs> Did it right? Yeah, I got back and I was like, the weather is blank. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. I haven't done that since. Uh, you should definitely send postcards. It's a joke that only works once. Yeah. Uh, and, well, then, and you have to have... Be, like, you can do it to several people. And then you can do yeah. it more often. If I was in like, if I went on holiday to North Korea, not that I would, <laughs> I would, I would definitely do that. Yeah. Um, do you reckon they'd allow you to send post from there? No, but you can send it from uh, South Korea when you yeah, go by. Uh, I suppose, yeah, you just get, be must buy your own North Korean postcard and send it. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty tapped. I've got a couple of like tradition stuff. Uh, go ahead. I don't um, have anything else. The importance of wedding dowry, uh, Mauritian Hindu and Muslim cultures, it is customary for... The bride's family to give dowry to the groom's family as a sign of respect and help the couple start their new life together. Nice. Uh, the celebration of Kavadi is a Hindu festival where devotees pierce the skin with needles and hooks as a form of devotion to the Lord Murugan. And hooks? Yeah, the deity of war and victory. So it goes properly. And it stays in or? Yeah, and they like lift people up with the hooks in their backs and oh. it's fucking gnarly. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's rough. The annual celebration of Thai Possam, Thai Possam Kavadi, a Hindu festival where devotees carry a wooden arch decorated with the flowers and climb stairs of the sacred mountain Lepus. Is it Lepus? I don't know. As a form of penance. Pus? Pus, yeah. Well, like the thumb. Like the Pus. What? Fuck <laughs> 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 her in the Pus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> and then they also celebrate Chinese New Year quite heavily. <laughs> Lots of red envelopes filled with money and lions and dragons. That's why they've got so many stamps. I don't think you you don't post those envelopes, do you? Maybe I'm just trying to find an explanation here. I mean, it's the only rational explanation. Do you know what they probably do? Here's here's the the rational explanation. Tom's hot take. What they do is honeymooners and people on holiday buy postcards and the Mauritians have cleverly worked out that they have no idea how many stamps they need to put on. <laughs> so they'll probably be like, oh, it's 20 stamps. That's per it. capita. Per capita. Yeah. <laughs> and they just cover them in, in stamps and send them on the way. That's my, that's my hot take. Love your hot take. That's takes. my Illuminati. <laughs> my Illuminati. My Illuminati uh, the conspiracy theory. Of stamps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. New World Order. Stamps because really their goal job. is clearly to be the leading country in stamp. Per capita, I yeah. mean, that's the most important thing. Everyone needs something. <laughs> I, I am out. I'm drained. Yeah, no, cl I'm clearly, fully, we're all out. Fully drained. Where are we going to go after... Myanmar. 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 However you want. Just not Burma. Malawi. Oh, yeah. Another country I've been to. Oh, see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Really liked Malawi. It was great. Were you the kid that Madonna brought back? <laughs> no, I was, was. Was he from Malawi? Think so. Oh, no idea. I'm gonna say yes. No, we'll find out. You'll find out in, find in out next two week. weeks' time. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, share, love, subscribe, all of that good shit. Nice. <laughs> See you next week. See you next week. <laughs>